Well g'day folks, my name's Ashley and in this video I want to show you how to fly in NDB Approach using the G1000 configuration and it's actually pretty straightforward. It's actually a lot easier than actually using ADFs because obviously this aircraft does not actually have an ADF receiver on board. Now, I did look up the instrument flying handbook published by the FAA and under GPS substitution, it's on page 9-27 it says IFR en route and terminal operations GPS systems certify for IFR en route and terminal operations may be used as a substitute for ADF and DMA receivers when conducting the following operations within the United States. And the third, third point I wanted to bring to your attention was navigating to or from an NDB or compass locator, determining an aircraft position over a fixed determined by an NDB or compass locator, or holding over an NDB or compass locator. Boom, that's exactly what we're doing for an NDB approach. Uh, the FAA Advisory Circular 90-108 titled Use of Suitable Area Navigation RNAV Systems on Conventional Routes and Procedures published March 3rd, 2011. It also goes into more detail about that. So what I've got is using the GPS, I've plugged in the GPS UMP which is the NDB and obviously it's also showing the distance in, uh, uh, GPS distance to the dist uh, to the actual nav aid and I've got two bearing in indicators. Now this approach I require bearings towards the Brickyard VOR which is the double one which you can see is tuned and identified both in nav 1 and nav 2 and that's the double one bearing pointer and the bearing single bearing pointer is the actual NDB. Now using the OBS option I've selected the actual inbound track which is 161 so we're actually heading towards the NDB right now currently about just over seven miles and so I'll just do the briefing now this is the NDB runway 15 instrument approach for Indianapolis Metro Airport uh, overhead the field uh, sorry overhead the nav we track outbound 341 and we have to stay within 10 nautical miles which we'll be making reference to the DME here and then Staying within 10 nautical miles, we'll do a right hand procedure turn to track inbound 161, which is currently set, and we'll have an MDA of 1600 feet. And that's based on using the altimeter setting actually at Indy Metro. So we're going to pretend that is actually Indy Metro. They have an AWOS there, so you actually would get the actual altimeter setting now. Um, go missed, overhead the NDB, and climb 2000 feet then climbing right turn 2,500 feet, entering the hold, left hand hold at 2,500 feet over the NDB, although I would go to 2,900 feet, because that's where you start at. Uh, the MSA is 25 nautical miles from the NDB, 2,900 feet. So as long as we're above 2,900 feet, less than 25 nautical miles, we can pretty much maneuver wherever we want. Because the terrain around here is very, very, it's, it's almost sea level. It's very flat terrain around here. Anyway, so we are currently tracking inbound. We have about just over four miles to go. And I'll track outbound and I'll stay within 10 nautical miles. Okay, so just over a mile and a half to go. And as you can see the bearing pointer, we are getting close to track, so the needle's going to continue to come in. I might actually just try and intercept that right away before we get station passage. We're not far off it. You'll see the needle start to swing around quite quickly. So we are getting pretty close. See the needle swing around to the back for station passage in just a moment. And there we go. There's station passage. Alright, the trick to flying NDBs, whether it be an instrument approach or just tracking en route, basically when you're tracking outbound in reference to the track you want, you gotta fly the opposite of the tail. So the tail is to the left of the track we want, so we want to go to the right. And now it's pretty much overhead, so we go back. There we go. And of course, if you're flying inbound, the opposite is true. We 
Rich, I'll show you in just a moment. We'll be heading inbound again. And if you have wind, windy crosswinds, you do the exact same thing. You'll do hold whatever heading it takes in order to maintain the bearing pointer matching up with your OBS. That's that's all you have to do. So your heading may not necessarily equal your track in windy conditions, but the principles are identical. All right, so we're approaching. We're at 7.5 DME now from the. Uh, NDB, so I'll actually start my turn, and what I do is, it's a right hand procedure turn, so at 8 dm I'll start the turn, but I do an 8260, so what that is, is let's just turn 80 degrees, there, at rate 1, as you can see, and then you turn 260 degrees the other direction, and it should bring you pretty much back on track, just in the opposite direction. You can follow the exact procedures on, published on the, on the approach plate, but I always found 8260s a lot easier instead of having to do any timing and things like that. And so that's, that's just going the other way now. But you can't turn the heading boat too far around, otherwise it'll turn the other direction and mess it up. So you've got to continuously update the heading boat. So still at rate one, maintaining 3,000 feet. I'm purposely not looking outside. I didn't bother messing with the weather outside of the visibility. Okay, the heading boat is currently set to the inbound track we want. And you can see the relative bearing needle is to the right of the track. So we're going to have to continue with our right hand turn in order to re-intercept the track. But at rate one, we should intercept the track pretty much as we reach our intended heading. But we'll see. You just keep an eye on the bearing point relative to the track we want. We might actually overshoot it a little bit. But we're still above the MSA within 25 nautical miles. Within 10 miles. Yeah, that's pretty much on track. All right. So we're going to send a 1,600 feet. So I should have actually set this already. Assuming this is our Indy Metro, we can go to 1600 feet. So we can continue our descent to 1600. So we want to be at 1600 feet by the time we get to the Anmary intersection, which is 053. Zero five, it's about zero five three is about there. At the same time, we're staying on track here. Sixteen hundred feet, a thousand feet to go. I actually always keep forgetting I've got the moving map here as well. I very rarely make reference to it. It is a nice feature to have. Just inside six miles. And if for whatever reason we couldn't uh, see the runway, we'd uh, continue on in a straight line, 
climbed 2,000 feet, then commence a right turn 2,500 feet into the left hand hold over the NDB, tracking 161 inbound. So they'll be holding in that direction. One minute left hand pounds. Just under a minute to go until we get to our intended altitude. And we're getting close to 053 bearing. feet and we're pretty much at about 053 about now. Oh there yeah I'm moving up there it is that bring. And I'm sort of look outside and go hey can we see? And look at that you can. Yeah it's runway 15 for Indy Metro Airport. Easy we made it in. Now, obviously I haven't done any radio calls or anything like that but you would normally do that as well. So that's pretty straightforward. An NDB approach using a G1000 setup. GPS and uh, the bearing point is very, very easy. It's a lot easier than a regular ADF on the traditional six pack. Well, I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching. I'll see you later.